And when developers are looking at our UI, that's one of the questions that they're going to be asking themselves is, is this modal right here a set pixels? Is it actually 960 pixels every time? Or is this still 100% width, but with a max width of 960 pixels? And the difference is when a modal is at something smaller than 960 pixels, it's not going off of the edge of the screen. It's actually shrinking to accommodate that smaller device size. But on really, really big monitor screens, we don't want this modal to stretch 1800 pixels or something like that. And so we want to communicate to developers that, hey, this modal is 100% width in that it is responding to the width of the screen, but it never gets bigger than 960 pixels. And I actually added a little example file to give you just a little snippet of how I would communicate breakpoint logic and max widths to developers as a part of the handoff process. So if we look at this really quickly, I have each breakpoint defined up here. Then I have a little note that is just from my handoff helpers library that I use to communicate the different logic at these breakpoints. And so you can see one of the main things I'm saying is that the max width of this modal is 960 pixels. As a result, I don't actually have to design the 2XL breakpoint because nothing changes. The modal stays at 960 pixels. Now, if we move down here, you can see, look, the course panel padding decreases to 24 pixels. Remember, at, at breakpoints, two things can happen. The layout can change or the individual component can change. And so this is an example of a component updating. We're decreasing the padding so that I can fit more content more easily in less space. Moving down here, you can see the max width on the modal has actually changed to 560 pixels. And that's because we've wrapped this to a column. And this brings up another point. You can see here that I actually have different sizes within each breakpoint. I have an 800 pixels here and a 1024 pixels here. And the reason for that is, is I wanna communicate how a design responds within a given breakpoint. And that's just a high level best practice as well. We want to design around the worst case scenarios. In this situation, the worst case scenario for the large breakpoint is getting down to about 800 pixels. That's when things can get the most squished before it flips to this column here. So I want to show developers, hey, how ugly can this possibly get? Because if I don't think through the smallest possible screen size within a given breakpoint, what can happen is that my designs will look really good at the highest end of the breakpoint, but as it gets smaller, it'll get super squished and actually break. So I do that pretty much everywhere. I'll get all the way down to 480 pixels and then 768 pixels here. And so right here, you can see we're saying, hey, this is 100% width, but there's 16 pixels padding for the actual screen itself but I don't want this to be as big as 16 pixels padding over here. That would start to look pretty ridiculous if we pulled this all the way across. And so instead I'm saying at this breakpoint, there's a max width of 560 pixels so that this is the biggest the modal can get and then this is the smallest the modal can get. And then the last thing here is on mobile, you can see we've actually removed that panel altogether there's a slight update to the HTML because I'm, I have a specific modal defined for mobile breakpoints that we're going to be using. And that's a good thing to bring up. Like I said, the goal is to keep your layer list the same, but don't prioritize that over a design that actually works really, really well on mobile. And so in this case, I am making a subtle update. I've changed this header to contain the title and the X, where before I actually just had a floating close button outside of the modal itself. And the only other thing I'll call out is this info card right here. This is the exact same card as this piece of UI over here. It's the same thing, the same layout. The layer list is the same. The HTML structure is the same. All I've done 
is swap out my textiles to mobile text. I've decreased the margin so that things are a little bit tighter because I don't have as much room to work with on mobile. And then I've changed the style. It's now white. And that's totally okay. Those kinds of cosmetic changes at different breakpoints are not a big deal whatsoever. If I would have totally broken apart this card and designed it a different way and things were in different orders and my layer list had changed, that would be much more difficult to do on mobile than to just update some of the colors and spacing. And that's pretty much it. When you're done, you're gonna have something that looks like this. You're gonna have your different breakpoints defined. You'll have different component styles for your different breakpoints. And we have a whole lesson that goes into how we can use variants to accomplish that. And then you'll have thought through what are the worst case scenarios? How scrunched can this possibly?